What's going on everybody? Hex TV back with another video. Today, I'm gonna to be doing a breakdown of how I set up my template. Basically how you would create a template to save you time and kind of organize everything because that's a big part of workflow is the more organized you are, the less time you actually spend on your project and um, the more work you can then take on. So ends up making you more money in the long run and makes it less tedious. So before we start though, I just wanted to say if you guys need any mixing services, if you guys want your song mixed by me, hit me up on Instagram at ITSH3X. I don't know where I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it up here somewhere in the, in the description. And then, uh, or you can email me at realhex, R E A L H3X at gmail.com, and I will get back to you and we can do some business. So, um, let's just get started right away. So here I have a completely blank logic session. Literally like nothing is going on here. What you're going to see is just in one audio track and look at the mixer, nothing. To start, what I would do is I would create a mix bus. Everything is going to be routed here along uh, except for the reference track, which I will get to. So first, first and foremost, just take this audio file go to stereo out right here go to like bus 20 doesn't matter really doesn't matter what bus you use and then right here this strip will pop up so then you're gonna want to right click right click can't speak create track now aux so basically quickly explaining buses and auxes and how they work this audio was routed to bus 20 meaning if I had an audio track on here, it would then route to here, right? And then it would play out of this track, which is to the stereo out. So keeping that in mind, you want everything to go through your mix bus aux, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna make this pink, right click, assign track color, pinkish color. We can make it that, that icon. Okay, so this is your mix bus. Everything goes to, it goes to here. So you will see me cons consistently route it to bus 20, route things to bus 20. So I will walk you through it and show you. Next, you're gonna wanna create a folder that contains either your two track instrumental, like the beat you get from YouTube or you download from BeatStars, or if you have track stems that you wanna import that someone gives you or you have for yourself, um, you have a folder of stems. So I will show you right now. So you're gonna name this stem, so for beat stem. And then you're gonna duplicate, 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 11, 12, we'll just stick to 12. Assuming there's 12 stems, there could be more. In that case, you would have to duplicate it more times when you actually open the new session. Um, you would prepare for more stems, but this is just a base template. So you have 12 stem tracks right here. You're gonna highlight all of them by hitting shift. So here you have one selected, shift, click. Then you're gonna right click, and then you're going to go to create track stack. Now there's two different types of stacks, which are pretty much like kind of like folders. There's a summing stack, which, which you can actually put plugins on. So it affects all of these audio files at the same time, or you can do a folder stack, which you can't put plugins on, but you can adjust the volume of. So we'll just do um, a summing stack for this. Cause we do want to be able to put an overall effects on the whole instrumental if we're using stems. So we'll do summing stack. Cool, so it's gonna say sum two or sum one, something like that. So you're gonna do two track inst. So this is how you affect just the two track. And then in here is all of the stems. So now you have a lone audio file. Here, let me add an extra one in here. So now you have a lone audio file up here. So you drag that down. Now we're gonna make a vocals folder. So I would make like five of these, two, three, four, five. Let's just do six for good measure and we'll just do we'll leave that lone audio file do another stack create track stack and we're going to do another i'm sorry we're going to do a folder stack this time so this is going to encase all of the vocal processing that we do it's going to contain everything that has to do with vocals except for our effects like reverbs and stuff like that create folder cool now we're going to do vo vox folder let's just make that um yellow for fun cool so now within here you have these things right here so 
these stems right here, you're going to want to create another stack. Bang, a summing stack within the folder. So now you're going to name this one lead vox. Okay. So now you have all these stems to bust. They so they automatically bust it so that it routes to this folder. So when you put plugins on, it affects everything kind of like the aux that we made up here. Very similar concept. Don't get too confused with this. Just pretty much follow along with what I'm doing. Um, I'm probably going to make another video on buses and auxes and stuff like that. So just kind of bear with me and follow along with what I'm doing. So you have this little summing folder right here that you can put plugins on. So you're going to want three of those. We already have one, so you're going to duplicate it twice. So duplicate, duplicate. Command D is to duplicate. In case you didn't, I didn't say that before. Um, so you're going to name one background vox and dub box because usually the background like ad libs and stuff are different volumes from the um the doubles or the harmonies and stuff like that so you have three folders right here all routed to bus 20. that's good that it routed, they're automatically routed to our mix bus which is the output that we want but uh, we actually want to route them to a new aux so what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight these three stacks bus and we'll pick bus 10. Doesn't matter what bus, but I'm just picking 10 for fun. Same thing we did before, right click, create track. Um, now it, it ended up in this folder, but we're gonna drag it out of the folder to the top inside this Vox folder, but above these stacks. We're gonna rename it all Vox because, and the reason why I didn't create another folder or stack, I should say, um, so that we could put plugins on all the vocals at once is because for some reason when you write when you highlight the stacks you can't create a new stack so um, I just used an aux instead and just routed it that way um, but anyways so you have your all vox new color let's just name, do it this little turquoise or teal and then we're gonna this is like an infinite loop so you don't want that so the output right here instead of doing bus 10 we're gonna do to the mix bus right here so that way the signal start the vocal signal starting from the stem it's going up to the lead vocals where you do your processing right and then from here you go to all your all vocals which encompasses the, all of your vocals and then from all vocals it goes to your mix bus cool so now we also want to make a new audio file so we'll just duplicate the stem up here bring it into our vocals folder and we're going to call it record track or rec track we're going to change that color to a different color like red which symbolizes recording um, this track we're going to put and make it go to output so we're going to go to this output and then go to the output tab and then do stereo output we don't want it going to the mix bus because we don't want anything that's on here to actually be a part of our song we want it to just be a spot where we can hit record and record our stuff right here like for example if i was to record right now with these vocals so we're recording cool so we have a little vocal take right there now we want to place that in our song so what we're going to do is let's just say it's a lead vocal we open our lead vocals folder pull it right down bang into the stem so now everything is perfectly routed to the mix through the mix bus through all of our effects that we choose to set it up with. That being said, on these stems, the only effects I like to put are cleanup effects, not cleanup effects, like the very base effects. So like, for example, in the folder, right? If you had two of these on top of each other, you wouldn't want one auto-tune affecting both of those tracks. You would want an auto-tune on a separate auto-tune on each track. So I would have things like auto-tune on here. If I wanted to put a noise gate, if there was noise in the background, I would put them on here. Um, anything like that, I would put there. But yeah, okay, so we collapse that. Now let's get out of our vocals folder. Let's delete this. So we now want to make a, another folder. So we're gonna duplicate this, Command D, like that. Change the track color, let's do like a purple. Dude, let's change this color too. I'm just gonna do like a like a light blue. Okay, so we got our vocals folder. I'm sorry, vocal FX. Cool. 
so vocal effects. This is where you put your reverbs, delays, things like that. So you're gonna want auxes, right? So you can delete this recording track, you can delete this folder, this folder, this folder. So you just want, uh, you want one reverb. I usually stick to one reverb and two delays, um, and then also parallel compression. So four, good math. We're gonna do four of them, so duplicate it three times. So one, two, three. Then we're gonna do reverb, delay one, delay two, and then parallel compression. Cool, so now obviously all of them are routed to bus 20, which is good, which is what we want. But what we don't want is for all of their inputs to be the same. For example, if I had my lead vocals and I wanted to send a reverb, right? In order to do that, I would go to sends, bus, and then I would want to send it to that bus, okay? But if I did that, I'm sending and I turn it up, I'm sending it to all of these, meaning the, the signal is now quadrupled, which is we don't want that. So I'm gonna go over how to route everything um, with the reverbs and stuff in a sec. Just bear with me, please bear with me. I know it's confusing, but um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments also because this can be super confusing when it comes to routing and stuff. For your reverb, your input can be bus eight, right? We can do bus nine as the next input. Now bus 10 is already taken, so we can just do bus 11, it's fine. And bus 12. Cool, so now you have all of your effects here, right? So now this is the bare bones setup. Now we have one audio track, lone audio track left. We're just gonna do reference track. And we're gonna take this off of bus 20 because when you're referencing, you're gonna go output, stereo output. When you're referencing, right? If you have your reference track here, you're gonna keep it muted the whole time unless you're trying to like check in with it. And if you're checking in with it, you don't want it routed to your master chain, your mastering chain. If you have your limiter that's making shit loud or like your, your all these effects you put on the overall mix, you don't want that to affect your reference. So you have it to a different output. So your mix bus is to is bus 20. So when you route things to your mix, your like normal mastering chain that you have, you're gonna route things to bus 20. But when you want it to be just bare bones, no effects at all, separate, you do the stereo output, which is what we want for our reference track. So this is your entire template right here. Literally, you have a folder for beats and your beat and beat stems, your vocals, and your effects right there right in place your master slash mix bus and your reference and that's all you really need to get um, a great setup now when it comes to actually setting plugins i'm not gonna go over, i don't i don't actually like have a vocal chain preset in here because i like to mix from scratch and actually like think about what i want with the song uh, mix by mix for vocal effects i do uh, have things preset so for example my reverb I always put a de-esser, as you probably see in my other videos. So I just do the Eosis uh, E2 de-esser, right? Now for this, I literally just take this stock setting, put it all the way wet, crank the amount, put the sensitivity down a little bit, and it just smashes the S's. So it's like super de-essed, like so de-essed, it, it's, it's crazy. And then you're gonna wanna put a reverb on. Now it really, any reverb. R, for example. Make sure the mix is at 100% on any reverb you use. It doesn't matter if you're using this plugin or the stock plugins, anything. Put the mix at 100%. Let's just say this was the reverb I wanted to use. Cool. And then I usually have um, an EQ after cutting up to like 200. And then just cutting like at 15K. Something like that. So then that's what I do. And then I'm gonna copy the de over to my delays, because I like to do the same thing with my delays. So then I'm gonna do that, I did that. So now, delay one, uh, let's just do H delay. Let's say we want quarter note delay, let's spread out. I will do like 30 feedback. No analog, because that shit's absolutely garbage. Make a telephone, lo-fi, 
cool so we have a quarter note and then now what we can do is we can copy that over delay two change it to one eighth and then do like ping pong for example this is just completely examples this isn't actually what i have i don't even really remember what i have i know it's a quarter and eighth i just forget if they're ping ponged and things like that um but yeah so this is a great starting point then parallel compression i used to have studio rack in here which is by waves you don't know what that is just ignore what i'm saying but it started glitching out at me so i stopped using it so basically i just do like any i do like an aggressive compressor like this is for example like go to the nuke setting on this one this shit's fire crank crank the input not all the way uh just enough so it's like hitting way down here and it's just crank it's crushing the signal and then i turn the up, output up a little bit attack super fast to like almost one uh release at like two and then that's it that's my parallel compression and then I literally to set up things being routed to these so I have my power compression two delays and reverb I go to my vocals folder go to my lead vocals and I prep so I have my reverb delay one delay two cool so I have those on there and then now on the all box I'm going to do parallel compression. So when I do parallel compression on all the vocals, so you're, what you're going to do is right now with these, there's no reverb, no delay or no delay actually engaged. But after you have your vocals mixed, I usually mix my vocals without vo uh, reverb and delay and then add it after um, to taste. So after your vocals are mixed and stuff like that and your lead vocals, you can turn it up uh, however much you want, however much delay you want on each, um, doesn't matter. Now your all vocals, you always want this to zero for your parallel compression because you want to send a full signal parallel compression. Again, I can do another video on that, but I won't go into in depth, just pretty much do what I'm doing. Um, and if you have questions, you can ask in the comments. Send it full signal and then you go to your vocal effects. Make sure your parallel compression volume is down. So then when you're mixing, when, it's, when you're ready to add the parallel compression, you can push it up slightly. That is pretty much it, but anyways, Yes, thank you for watching. Um, I'm gonna go over buses and auxes and stuff like that because that shit gets really confusing. Um, but I'll go over that soon, don't worry. But um, in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Again, if you need mixing, let me know. You can email me or DM me. Um, the links are below. And uh, yeah, catch you next time. See ya.